What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of Mav Attack. If you don't know what video your ass just clicked on, this is the Sims 4 review for PC. Are you excited? Because I'm excited. And we'll see how I felt about the game. So without further ado, let's fucking start. Have you ever wanted to play God? Well come and play God while you play a game while you play a game. <laughs> the Sims has been around since the year 2000, and if you don't know what The Sims is, you're slacking tremendously. The Sims is a simulation game where you create people and families called The Sims, build houses, and help The Sims with their everyday wants and needs. Your Sim needs a job? Surf the web or read a newspaper for job leads. They need to take a shit? Send them to sit on a john. With The Sims 4, he has been able to improve the series and make it better than ever with enhanced character customization and detailed and in-depth structure building, but also on the opposite end of them, leaving a few features out. Um, E.I., yeah, are you gonna do the titles or- I mean, are you gonna keep me out of the rest of your videos like you did on the last two? Well, the last couple videos, you told me you've been busy and I, you know, I just figured I'd let you have your time. Well, shit. I guess I'll help your week cast. Well, damn, why I gotta be all that for? Anyways. Uh, just do whatever you do. Story. Since The Sims generally doesn't have much of a story, you can create your own Sims with aspirations and traits and give them your own goals and things to achieve throughout their whole lifetime. Send your sims to work where they can either chat it up with the other sims like a cool cat to become the socialite around the office, or have them dig into their workload focusing on and giving them a highly effective job performance. Once you start making money and getting established, you can then use that money your sims earn to upgrade your house with the sims 4 new upgraded purchasables for your house. You can also start a family, have kids, and be the family man. Nah, no, Shane. Gameplay. So, some of the features from the previous Sims game are in this game, as they should be, and EA uses or tries to use the formula of what isn't broken doesn't need to be fixed. These features are only improved upon, making the experience more interactive, seamless, and less buggy. Now, if you play The Sims 3, you're more than likely going to be disappointed because a lot of the items and small things that made the game a little more convenient are absolutely gone. If you skip The Sims 3, your time here will be a little better and you'll enjoy it a little more. The Sims look great this time around with plenty of features and ways to customize them in-game. Their animations are great and the ability to multitask is awesome. For example, studying, doing your homework, and listening to music increases your fun factor and allows you to learn. Build mode is very similar to The Sims 3 but includes some improvements. Auto roof and roof height are gone as well as foundations. Another thing that's pretty great are window heights. You can set the height of your windows. However, while I was building, the whole experience was just sort of drab in a sense of the whole world felt kind of empty. Without the open world, the content is a little, little boring. What I liked. I just really love the soundtrack. Every Sims game has had a really great, vibrant, fun soundtrack that always catches my attention and puts a smile on my face as I'm building. The game features a cleaner and more user-friendly interface, so things aren't cluttered, things aren't scattered around your screen, it's conveniently placed either on the bottom top, left or right of the windows, so it leaves the main open screen available for you to view and play. More community integration with other simmers, being able to take someone's built house from online, download it into your neighborhood, and go at it is a really fun experience. Although it does start out buggy, it slowly gets better with time. That classic fun sim sense of humor, I love that. I love the lightheartedness and the sims never takes itself so seriously. You, have, you get in there, you have fun, and you laugh, and you see the goofy side of things. Character customizing is pretty awesome, allowing you to go in depth and fine tune how your character will end up looking. Building, although lacking, is still pretty damn fun, and the redesign of build mode makes it easier to get in and out and start building houses from the ground up. What I disliked. Everything looks kind of boxy. I can't get over the fact that everything looks really boring. Um, they're all flat, they don't have a very dynamic style to them, and I'm talking about appliances, furniture, etc. for your house. Loading screens to go into any building when the game should be more open world like its predecessor. So if I want to go from the park and go into the club or a bar, I have to sit and wait for the game to load that certain area, which is relatively annoying in all honesty. Listen, there's 80 plus items and features that were in the previous sim games that were removed for whatever reason, including things like no swimming pools, no toddlers, no cemeteries, no bikes, no cribs for your children, no hot tubs, no pool tables, and the list goes on. I am just very disappointed at how much they have taken out of the game. Overall. If you're a diehard Sims fan, you probably have the game already. I enjoyed my time with it, but do I think it's worth the $60? Nah. Side note, basically the game doesn't feel fleshed out. 
it's boring, and the style of the items is a step back. It feels very empty after having played The Sims 3. Of course, The Sims 3, we had so many different expansion packs and DLC, so maybe Sims 4 will get a little better in the future. But, do I recommend the game? Not currently. Maybe the future will make the game better, but I can't support the game and tell you guys you should own it when it's clearly lacking features so EA could do a cash grab in the future with DLC and expansions which is clearly consumer exploitation and another reason why I can't support some of the bullshit that EA tries to hit us with as gamers to make extra money. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this review, please let me know by either liking the video or just sending me a comment and let me know what your thoughts are on The Sims 4. But until next time, guys, I'll see you on the next episode of Map Tech, motherfucker.